Hello and welcome to BioRusage Lesson Sunday edition. Today we are going to be talking about two different kinds of chemical reactions and we are going to be talking about energy required to do those, those chemical reactions or produce when you make those chemical reactions to happen. Energy is called ergos. So when you have an ergometric bicycle, you are using a bicycle that measures the amount of energy that you are putting in there. So ergonic means energy. Exergonic is a chemical reaction that releases energy. And endergonic is a chemical reaction that put, needs energy to be put in to be able to be performed. So exergonic, outside, energy goes away. And endergonic, inside, energy goes inside the chemical reaction. Okay, so here we have an example of a chemical reaction where A, B and C, D, they are the reactants, they react together and they end up making A, C and B, D. In this example, the products are less energetic than the reactants. So we have an exergonic reaction because ultimately this chemical reaction will release energy because the products has less energy than the reactant. So exergonic, it gives away energy. Most of the time this is going to be heat, but could be other kinds of energy as well. Okay? The alternative, you know, the, the other way, is for you to have an endergonic reaction. So the, the other way around in this example, if you want to get AC plus BD to make it to be transformed back into AB plus CD, you are going to be needing to put in energy. So the, this chemical reaction will require energy to be put inside of it because the products are more energetic than the reactants. This is the idea of endergonic and exergonic. Okay? So let me show you an example here of endergonic and exergonic. Here we have SP plus QR and we want to make it become no, to go there and react, and we want it to become SQ plus PR. So we are changing the molecules here, and because the products have more energy than the reactants, energy needs to be put in. So how are we going to be doing that? One way is adding heat. So some chemical reactions that are going to be absorbing heat from the environment to be able to be performed so they get in energy. But there are other ways of this happening. So SP plus QR to react, you may have a different way of putting in energy that's not necessarily heat. That's why, by the way, we call this exergonic or endergonic. This one is endergonic because it requires energy, not necessarily heat. Okay, so requires energy to be put in. Where can this energy come from? So as we saw before, if this is heat energy, it may come from heat outside, so you have you know, something that's going to be taking heat, reduce the temperature, so this is a class chemistry reaction. But there are other alternatives, okay? So, let me show you here another possibility. So we have AB plus CD is a chemical reaction, you know, that if we make it react together, they end up making AC plus BD, and this reaction left is exergonic. So this reaction left, when it happens, it releases energy. So if you have a reaction on the left that releases energy, it might be coupled with an energy on the right that requires energy, because then one chemical reaction may give energy to the other chemical reaction, and voila, that's what we have. The, the exergonic reaction on the left is giving energy to the endergonic reaction on the right. So these two reactions, they are coupled, and the excess energy from one is being used to power the endergonic reaction that requires a certain level of energy to go on. Okay? Classic reaction that's going to be coupled no, involves one specific chemical, and I'm going to show you here. If I want you to change SP plus QR and change that into SQ plus PR, the same endergonic reaction, I need energy to be put in. So it could be heat, could be something else, 
But in this case, let me take this out, though I didn't do the chemical reaction yet, I will make another chemical reaction, which is represented here on the left, with, from a molecule called ATP, adenosine 3-phosphate. It's a molecule, it's a nucleic acid that contains 3-phosphate in it. And these 3-phosphates, what we can do is to transform that into ADP and let a phosphate go. When, when that phosphate goes, it takes with it part of the energy. This reaction on the left, yellow, is, in the, is, is exergonic, is giving away energy. So the energy now was passed to the reactant. So when that happens, now the reactant have more energy than before and actually have more energy than the product. So now the reaction can happen downhill. This reaction now, SP phosphate QR, now this is going to be an exergonic reaction because now it goes downhill. So basically this energy can be used to break the bonds, the phosphate will go away and SQ bonds with PR and the phosphate went, sorry, let me go back here, and the phosphate went away to be used again to make more ATP. So this is a classic coupling of energy. That's why until today we said that ATP stands for energy because one ATP molecule can perform this exergonic reaction that makes ATP and a phosphate. This phosphate can be put into another chemical reaction, make that, those reactants more energetic, and then phew, they can go downhill and make the chemical reaction to happen by itself. So ATP, the ultimate coupler. Okay? It's a very, very important molecule to provide uh, energy. So again, just showing this again, you have there an, a reaction that requires energy, and I can use ATP. I have ATP on the left, lots of energy. So I'm going to be releasing the energy from ATP, making it ADP plus P. And that energy goes on the reactant. The reactant now has a phosphate. And when it has the, the phosphate there full of energy, now that guy becomes energetic, more energetic than the product itself. So it just has to go downhill and make the chemical reaction to happen. So this is energy coupling using ATP, okay? So, if I have a chemical reaction like this, AC plus BD becoming AB plus CD, and it requires energy, it's, an, it's endergonic, I can couple it with another chemical reaction. As I just showed you, ATP is the one. So I have an ATP, I transform that into ADP plus P. It's an exergonic reaction. It gives the energy through the phosphate to the ACR, to the BD, becomes more energetic, then the, it happens and the phosphate is let go back again. But the question then is, how do I make more ATP? If ATP becoming ADP plus P is exergonic, how can I build more? So the inverse of this reaction, because ADP plus P is less energetic than ATP, for me to make it happen, I need to make an endergonic reaction. So I need to put in energy. So which energy I'm going to be putting? One typical place where living organisms get energy is by burning glucose. But you don't call burning because a very, very controlled chemical reaction, which is called cell respiration. So in which we get a molecule of glucose, in this case with oxygen, to simplify your life, but it could be without oxygen as well. So glucose plus oxygen becomes CO2 plus water. This chemical reaction is exergonic because glucose and oxygen has more energy than CO2 and water together. So exergonic chemical reaction, it gives away energy to make ADP plus P to become ATP. When you break glucose with oxygen, you produce ATP. And not one, you produce a lot of ATPs. Okay? But then comes the question again. If I'm using glucose and oxygen to make CO2 and water to release energy, how can glucose be made in the first place? In your case, in my case, we don't. We don't make glucose, we eat glucose. No, we are consumers and we eat organisms that made glucose for us or organisms that ate organs that made glucose for them. So this chemical reaction that built glucose is an endergonic reaction which you probably have already heard in you know, your early years, which is photosynthesis. Basically, plants and photosynthesizing bacteria are capable of getting CO2 and water, and with the use of light, 
so abiotic energy, no energy from sun, to glue carbon dioxide and water together, making glucose highly energetic, and release oxygen as a byproduct. So this here is a cascade of chemical reactions that take in energy and then make it available for an, a, another reaction. So basically, what we have here is that we have, let me put this in yellow, bright yellow here, we have light energy coming here, making this reaction here to be possible. So photosynthesis made glucose, but then we break glucose down, we transform that into CO2 and water, releasing energy. Energy here is capable of couple and power this endergonic reaction here that makes ATP plus P become ATP. And then immediately our bodies can get ATP and break it down into ATP plus P, releasing energy. And this energy here then can be used to make those guys to become these products over here. So it's a series of chemical reactions that happen in different times. This here is going to be happening in plants, and this here, respiration, is going to be happening in plants or in someone that ate plants. So you are doing this at this very moment, breaking glucose down with oxygen, producing ATP by endergonic reaction. So ATP can be broken down into ATP plus P, exergonic reaction, to power every single chemical reaction in your body. You're moving your muscle, you're moving ions in your brain, everything that's using energy is using ATP energy that ultimately comes from cell respiration. Okay, so putting things together, coupling reactions is when you have an exergonic reaction that are going to be releasing energy to make an endergonic reaction. So the example we gave here, to make the blue reaction endergonic, we have the yellow reaction, exergonic ATP becoming ADP, and then you can have a coupling, a coupling that involves ATP, which is a molecule that can hold the energy of the bonds in it. Three phosphates, so we have here a molecule called adenosine phosphate, phosphate, phosphate. The energy is going to be in here. To build this here, glue a phosphate into the ADP, you need energy. But when you break this down and you separate the phosphate, it gets energy with that. So basically, you're using energy from bonding. Okay? Just one more type of uh, energy coupling that is used a lot in life that involves this mnemonic here is the oxidation and reduction reactions. So oxyreduction is something that you are going to learn in chemistry if you didn't learn it yet. It has to do with energy, but not energy of bones itself, energy of electrons, energy of protons. So basically, when you move protons and electrons, you are doing oxidation reduction. And the oil rig mnemonic is for us to remember that oxidation is the loss of electron, oil. Oxidation is loss of electrons or hydrogen, okay, electrons and hydrogen go together, and reduction is gain of electrons and or hydrogen. So if a molecule loses electrons and or hydrogen, it suffered oxidation. If a molecule receives electrons and or hydrogen, it suffered a reduction. It's another kind of coupling, and we are going to be seeing this kind of coupling a lot when we study cell respiration and photosynthesis, because part of the energy involved in breaking down glucose to make energy involves oxygen reduction in addition to ATP and ADP and photosynthesis as well. Okay, so one example here of a chemical reaction, this here, AB plus CD becoming AC plus BD may release energy, so ex uh, exergonic. It may be an energy of bonding, you know, enough to be making ATPs, but instead of that, it may be energy of electrons and or hydrogen. So if AB plus CD releases electrons, there is a molecule called NAD, which is an acceptor of electrons, that receive it, the electrons and the protons, and become NADH plus H plus. So basically, no oxidation is lost, these molecules here suffered oxidation, so this guy here suffered reduction because reduction is gain. NAD gains electrons, so here you have a reduction, but this here suffered oxidation 
they always go together. For someone to be oxidized, someone has to be reduced. And for someone to be reduced, someone has to be oxidized. They go together side by side. If someone loses an electron, someone has to take it. And electrons cannot be just lost to the environment, to the world, to the universe. Electrons have to go from someone to someone else. Okay? We'll see more about that when you take a look on the next classes on cell respiration and then on photosynthesis. And I hope this oxy reduction thing is going to become a little bit more clear. I hope. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is just to illustrate to you what the hell is a NAD. A NAD is this huge gigantic molecule. This is NAD plus because now it's missing uh, electrons and uh, it's missing hydrogen over there. And this is NAD H. So basically, it receives an electron and a proton, and it can even carry another proton flying around. Okay? So this is the NAD or NAD H that we saw before. I hope you have enjoyed the class. And now you can do the quiz, and I'll see you in another class. Tschüss, bye bye.